Hi, I'm Mark Goodner on the C++ team here at Microsoft, and I'm here today to give you a quick demonstration of embedded development in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. So first, just to quickly kind of go over what our approach to embedded development is here, we're looking to try and solve uh, core inner loop needs that embedded developers need, and we want to solve those commonly across Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. And when I say core inner loops are embedded developers, what I'm talking about is that embedded developers have some different needs than most of every other C++ developer, particularly in their inner loop. And that's because they're dealing with hardware. So they need capabilities to do things like inspect peripheral registers of what's actually occurring on the hardware while they're doing the debugging. Also, while they're doing debugging, if they're using something like a real-time operating system like FreeRTOS or ThreadX, they're going to need to take a look at what the actual understanding of those RTOS objects are during the debug cycle, as well as interacting with hardware over things like serial. And so what we're trying to do is provide some of those capabilities because it's not enough to have a great C++ experience. You need these core inner loop needs to really light up embedded development in the IDE. And as part of this, we're also partnering deeply with silicon vendors. Um, and through that, what we're doing is working with them to get recommendations of the Visual Studio family uh, for their customers to get reach out to embedded developers because embedded developers really start with the hardware. And so we're working with them to adopt you know, some of the tools that we're developing here, as well as adopting VC Package, which this talk doesn't really delve into, but we've added capabilities to VC Package that help with one of the big challenges for embedded development, which is actually the acquisition of tools. We've got some new capabilities for VC Package around artifacts. It helps you bootstrap a dev box based on a manifest that goes with your project that describes what are the compilers that are necessary and can help restore those on the developer machine. And then we're also working together with silicon vendors around new project experiences that include the device configurations necessary to actually target the hardware. And so with that as kind of a quick background, uh, let's just dive into a demo. I, I want to start with something very real world. We're going to import a ST Micro project uh, that uses uh, Azure RTOS or ThreadX. We're going to build that project and do a little bit of editing. And then we're going to debug the project uh, firmware running on an actual board. In Visual Studio Code, we'll want to go to the command palette and look for a create project from ST project. Now I'm going to navigate to where I saved an ST project from uh, the ST IDE or from their project configurator and open that up and load it into VS Code. Now I'm going to trust this project as I've imported it. It's generated a CMake project out of that ST project. You can see it's got the debug and release configurations there. And now all of my normal CMake functionality works. Uh, so I can uh, clean, reconfigure all the, the project. And just, uh, this is a ThreadX project, so if we take a look at the source code here, the application source code is here in this app ThreadX. And so you can see I've got all of my source code available, uh, IntelliSense is lit up, and now I can start editing my code. And what I'm doing here is adding some threads uh, to the ThreadX application to basically to blink an LED. ThreadX is a, an RTOS uh, from Microsoft. Uh, it also goes by the name Azure RTOS. ThreadX is kind of a legacy name, but it's commonly used and embedded. And so what we're doing is we're setting some basic initialization, initialization code here, and then we're going to create three threads to, bring, to blink a red, green, and blue LED that's on the board that this project is configured for. Now with everything configured, I can click Build and start the build of the firmware. Here I can use IntelliSense to peek at the definition of this uh, variable name and kind of look at the define underneath it so that I can see what the actual hardware registers are that are being called, which I can use in just a moment when we start debugging. Now let's take a look at the debug configuration. And here we can see a bunch of options that are more specific to embedded, like a bunch of server arguments we're passing that are specific to this board we picked up from the project settings. And setting stop at connect to false. Um, that way I can actually skip over the linker script, otherwise we'd step into that uh, to see the startup code. I set a breakpoint here on the 
uh, where we're going to toggle that GPIO pin. Once we connect to the board, we hit the breakpoint. So we're actually debugging the firmware running on the hardware. And in the command palette, I can look for peripheral view, which comes from the embedded tools extension. And now expanding that, I get a view of the what's going on with the hardware registers that are on this board uh, that are coming from an SVD file that was part of the project that's defined by the CMSYS standard. And based on what I learned earlier, I can expand to the right uh, node of the GPIO bank and select the right pin and step over that and see the value change. All right, so now that we've seen that, I'm, I'm sure you want to know how to get started. Um, for Visual Studio Code, what you want to do is go grab the Embedded Tools extension, and that will pull in all of the necessary dependencies like the C++ extension that you need to get started. Now, while the demonstration that I gave you there was using Visual Studio Code, everything that I showed in that is also available in Visual Studio. So to try this out in Visual Studio, what you need is the embedded support that came in in Visual Studio 2022. Uh, so just go in to the installer and select the Linux and Embedded Development Workload, and you'll get everything you need. So to recap the embedded features we have for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, uh, we've got edit and build support, of course, for your firmware. Uh, we've got support for debugging uh, on the device target, uh, so you can actually see what's happening on the hardware. As part of that, we have a peripheral register view where you can actually inspect what's happening in the hardware uh, based on the code you're running. You can inspect the RTOS view, this provides a way to show what is going on with RTOS threads and other RTOS objects. Uh, we didn't show this in the demo, but we do have a serial monitor as well that allows you to both monitor what's happening on serial, but also you know send commands over serial, so it's an actually interactive uh, serial monitor. And then finally, we talked about the ST Micro projects, which was where we got started, basically from an ST Micro development environment or from their project configuration tool. You can take one of those projects and import them into Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code as a CMake project. So this is a view of the Visual Studio Code environment for embedded development that we saw in the demo. And so if we take a look at the same demo running in Visual Studio, you can see it's the same capabilities, but themed for a Visual Studio look and feel. So it's the same capabilities in either Visual Studio Code or in Visual Studio. And so to finally to wrap up, you can learn you to try our embedded development support. You can either use Visual Studio 2022 with the Linux and embedded workload, or in Visual Studio Code, you can go get the Embedded Tools extension. Uh, there's links here to a number of blog posts about our embedded support in both Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Uh, the C++ blog is where to always watch for new announcements and news about what we're doing in this space. And if ever you need to reach out to us, you can use the email address there on your screen. Thanks a lot for your time.